This week on the Lessons Podcast, I sit down with Owen and Tristan Palmer, two brothers that I met back in school. They now run their own successful businesses, Tristan with a coffee machine rental business and Owen with a property maintenance and building firm. These guys talk throughout this episode how, as young kids, they learn a hard work ethic and money management skills from their dad. He'd pull them out of school to go and work with him um, and learn how to you know, earn a hard day's wage. He'd pay them little bits of shrapnel to bring the, the shopping in and even paid Owen to dig holes in the garden. These guys are just 22 and 21 and I think even people double their age could learn something from their work ethic and how they run their businesses. Owen talks about how at the start of his career as, a, as an entrepreneur, he was billing for £2,000 and now he's billing for £100,000. That shows the scale of what these guys have built at such a young age. So I hope whatever stage you're at in your life, whether you're a budding entrepreneur or whether you've got a successful business, you can take some inspiration from these young guys and their stories. Right, Tristan, Owen, thank you both for coming in for a chat today. No, thanks um, for yeah, As I mentioned, we, we always start our podcast with the first question, which is what is the most important lesson you've ever learned? So if you both don't mind giving us your answer for that. So I would say it would be learning to adapt and use what you've got. Um, a, lot of, a lot of great entrepreneurs and business owners use what they have around them to make it work. If you haven't got something, it's not a problem. You know, you might not have your stock. You won't have a massive amount of money necessarily as a startup. You need to look around, find things that are available to you and use them to their full extent um, to be able to, to, to make something. Then when you've got the things, you can put everything in place. But to begin with, you're not going to have a lot. So you need to try and adapt and overcome every little problem um, that you can. And that's the thing. Most of it is just problem solving. You know, it's all about just thinking outside the box and just getting things done. And that's another thing is is don't don't waste time thinking about doing something. Literally, just get on and do it. And that's the, in my opinion, the biggest thing is is to success is taking action and taking really control of your life and just really getting off your ass and doing it. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is it is about just problem solving, thinking outside the box, and um, just getting. Okay, cool. So, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourselves and what, what you both do? So, um, for, yeah, for me, is I have a uh, coffee machine rental uh, company. So, we um, rent out really locally. Um, so, based in Milton Keynes, um, really rent out you know, about an hour and a half, two hours away. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I started that about three years ago, I think it was. Um, and it's one of them where I just fell into doing the coffee machines. It's mm -hmm. not something... I ever wanted to do and not something I thought I'd ever do. Um, what I wanted to do back when I was in school, I always loved motorcycles. Mm -hmm. always wanted to build them, like your Orange County choppers, you know, that yeah, you know, yeah. custom motorcycles. And I always wanted to do that. I used to do that as a hobby. I learned to weld when I was 13 to 14. Um, like, and then I learned how to, like, you know, uh, cut the bikes, turn them into bobbers and stuff like that. And then when I left school... Um, I started working for my dad who has a coffee company. I mm -hmm. um, started doing, basically, I remember it now, I, I was sweeping up the floor and I was literally everyone's tea boy. You know, I had the, I had the crap, I had the crap job. I literally sweeping the floors, labelling things. I, I started from the bottom. That's where you've got to start, isn't it? And that is the best way because I, I literally um, just, yeah, worked my way up and I started doing machines. Um, so I started from packing the warehouse, uh, from sweeping the floors to doing orders and stuff, helping there. Um, and then I started uh, started doing the machines. I just started getting good at it. And the thing is, is obviously, me and Owen are very fortunate, is we've had our uh, dad sort of guiding us and, you know, um, pushing us um, at, from an early age. So even, like, school is... We didn't, I certainly, I didn't spend most, much time in school. Um, I spent a lot of it down the office. It was either in the office, uh, working away at events with him, um, just learning that, that side of meeting people. And um, also, it was like after school, we'd be down there, weekends, it would always be something working. We were always brought up. It was, uh, it was never pocket money. We never got given pocket money. It was always wages. It was always yeah, like about earning your money. Um, and even from, what would you say, even from early, like four years old, weren't it? five years old, we would, uh, it would, uh, it would, even if it was carrying the shopping from the car, yeah, yeah, the fridge, yeah. 
He would then give us change. Washing he up. He didn't know what the change was. But yeah, you know, washing yeah, up. Yeah, that was yeah, Washing yeah. up. We got um, the, the change from that. And he just, whatever change was in the pocket, he gave it to us. We put it in our little tins. And then he would then work out what he thought we earned that month. month. And they would take us Toys R Us. And then we would go and Toys R Us and we'd get to spend yeah, our Yeah, get to spend what we wanted. And or if, if we'd, we wanted yeah, we'd, we'd save up or something. Yeah, we'll go yeah. Arms on, on, on something. Yeah. Bought, it might be Lego. And we, you know, we, we put our money together and bought this Lego set or something like that. And it was, but it's always having to work for the money. Like Owen is... Um, is uh, he, he sent you outside digging, wasn't it? Yeah, just digging holes. I'll finish one hole. Rain. Right now, digging another one over there. <laughs> rain. Yeah, just Even be out there doing something. It didn't matter what yeah. it was, but you had to work to to get something. Yeah. yeah, and that really taught us from an early age is it, it not only was it back then it was very much it wasn't you know run your own business. It was just work hard, and if you do work some you know get a job, it's work to the absolute best you can um, and I think something me and Owen have always done um, and I don't you know don't sound big headed or anything but we've always put more you know 100% you know 110% we've always gone that extra mile in it doesn't matter if it was Owen uh, which was, I'm sure he explained when he was working on the, the motocross bikes or me doing the coffee machines it was I if I you know if I had to stay and do however many hours it was you know 12 hour days minimum at you know however old I was is I would do whatever it took to get it done and also like Owen said is problem solving is some people it's oh we can't do that because we don't have that part mm. well, how do we fix that how do we get around that how do we make this work um, yeah. so yeah you go I will probably talk forever yeah no so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I run a construction company um, local to sort of Milton Keynes Northampton Bedford um, and we do extensions, renovations, and plan is to get into new builds, um, small developments where I don't want to be a big developer like Taylor Wimpy and all these other ones where you're not really building quality houses. We're, we're a quality company, quality over quantity, um, and doing maybe three or four large four-bedroom sites and stuff, starting off with, with small single dwellings. Um, so, yeah, we do a lot of renovations and, and extensions at the moment. Try to stay away from repair work, but, but we still do. Uh, been doing that for probably past three years now. Um, so, yeah, and we've got four, four full-time members of staff and a few few subcontractors that we, we keep on as well. So, yeah. Cool. How old are both of you? Uh, I'm 22. Yeah. I'm 21. Cool. So, could you just both define what an entrepreneur is in your your minds what what is an entrepreneur for me it's a hard one really because i don't consider myself yeah you don't like the word do you (laughs) yeah you thought yeah i i I would never call myself one i think personally how i look at the word is you for instance um again we're very fortunate obviously we had our dad as a mentor and um friday we met um some amazing uh, what i would call entrepreneurs um, and there's a, uh, one of our friends called uh, uh, Matt. He was in a, um, a book called Unsexy Business, and I ended up meeting um, the guy that wrote that, and it's all through networking, all through meeting these people, and like they're entrepreneurs, you know. Uh, they built themselves multi-million pound companies, and it's, for us, is we're very fortunate to be in the, you know, in the, um, be able to speak to these people yeah. and um, in their company and um, get advice from them. Um, but for me, is I, I just I would consider myself as just a hard worker. You know, okay. it's literally just get like a, a, it all goes down problem solving. That's an entrepreneur. Is you got to, you've got to just get on and do it. Um, take risks. That's another one. Um, and that's what I would say. Would you? I would say yeah. I mean, there's a lot of qualities, isn't there? There's a lot of traits and qualities that you must have in order to to be an entrepreneur. But I think it's very hard to to define it down to. To, to a select few of those. Yeah. I think as long as you've got three or four of them, you're probably going to make it. Hard work being one of them. Um, you know, resilience. You know, you're not going to give up after five minutes, change your mind and then go on to something else. I've seen a lot of people, a lot of good friends, where you're like, you're, you're talented, you're really clever at what you do. But one minute they're doing this, next minute they're changing their mind, they're doing this. It's like, you never, you haven't got a plan, you're not going anywhere with that. Um, so, that, you know, they have the, op- you know, they've got the opportunities, they've got everything around them, and they've got the intelligence, but not the resilience to actually put the effort in and go the full mile and just get it, get it over the line. Um, and they're just on that crusp of it, making it work, and 
they've they've got bored and they've done something else. So there's a lot of traits, and like I say, you know, those people they're entrepreneurs, but they're not going to make it and, and get it get it done. They need to sort of work on that, and it's you know they they're, they're very talented people. Um, but yeah, I think it's hard to define define the word down to a select few traits. I think you know yeah. it's it's quite an open open and word. That's the thing is, there's far more you know people that are cleverer than us. There? Oh, there far always more. will be. There always will yeah, be. Far more, but it is all about. You don't have to be, you know, Einstein. You don't have to be um, like from university or whatever it is. Is it is just about getting it comes in up all shapes and sizes, and doesn't it? That. You know, you come from any background. You know, they, it, it, but I, I think definitely some some of the key characteristics would be resilience, yeah. hard work, um, and just to be able to problem solve because. Every single entrepreneur, I don't care, you know, where they've come from, will have had problems and obstacles that they've had to overcome. Absolutely. And I think the the also the one that is key is taking that risk, is because you do yeah. get hard workers, people that again it is people that own really good jobs, and you know they're successful in their own right. You know, work your way up, work your way to the top of a company, and uh, get yourself that good job, the job you always wanted. Um, and with entrepreneurs, is you take that risk to go out on your own. And that's a big step to do. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of weight on your shoulders sometimes. So mm. I'd say, yeah, take a take him risk as well. Yeah, I agree. I, <clears throat> for me, I think that's probably taking the risk is the biggest mm. indicator whether you're an entrepreneur, I think. We've, we've interviewed some people on this podcast that have left extremely stable jobs with a really, really good income, yep. Yep. good prospects. Like no reason why a sensible person would leave that job. But they like a guy called Will that we spoke to in London. He worked in the city, great job, went to university, got a great degree, had the, an amazing education the whole way, and then left a very stable city job to go and make a ginger beer brand business. And he's loving it, flying, goes around London on his bike delivering ginger beer. Yeah, absolutely loves it. But it's that like taking that step is just such a massive risk for for someone that's got a stable income, I guess, isn't it? And that's the thing, if you find something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I was just thinking that, you yeah, know, follow, yeah. what you, follow what you enjoy and you're going to put the 100% in then, aren't you, to, to get it done? So. Absolutely. So for you guys, what's the biggest benefit of being your own boss? I would say it's the... Um, I'd say it's the... Not freedom, because there's, there's not a lot of freedom. Is, there, is, there is and there isn't. For instance, with us, is one thing we love is we fly. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Wings, it, it, no it allows more opportunities that you wouldn't have yes. doing anything else. Yes, that is probably one um, of the biggest benefits. So you know, we are fortunate that we can go. F- you know, as I fly an R twenty two helicopter, um, I'm in the uh, process of getting my license for it, and so I can go out during the day and do that. Uh, but then also, I have to make up for that. So, yeah, exactly. You know, then you're working work late, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So. And, you know, we work seven days a week. We work, you know, stupidly long hours. But then also, if you give, you then get to take out a little bit. Yeah, I can't, so I can't think of a time, time I've ever had set hours. You know, no. what, what, what hours do you work? Well, how many hours are in a day, really? Because it, yeah. it doesn't really matter. But you can, especially once you get into it, you can structure your day around where you've got to be and the things you've got to do. To be able to do the things that you want to do, I'm getting flying lesson in the morning, and then you can do something else in the in the afternoon or something. Um, as long as you're putting those hours in, it doesn't matter at what time. So you can always change your day to suit. So it gives you freedom in that sense, but it's not giving you freedom because you you could also argue if you've got a nice job, well, you've got the freedom in out of your hours, haven't you? Whereas there's no yeah. such thing as out of hours when you run when you run your own business. So, and also, I think that. Um it's the, what is it? What word am I looking for? It's you're setting your own path and you're making your own destiny. I think mm. that's one, uh, one thing that's key is you get what you put in. Yeah. So if you want to have whatever lifestyle it is, you've got to put in the work to get there. And really, within reasons, it's limitless. Mm. You get what you put in. And that's, I think, your own, being your own boss. And um, Again, I don't consider myself a boss. I just, you know, <laughs> I, I, I just literally, you know, I do what I do. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you, you, you get what you put in. And I think that's what it gives you is the chance to basically make whatever life you want to have mm-hmm. and what you're willing to put in and sacrifice to make that life. Okay. So you both, you fly helicopters, you're flying... Uh, fixed wing planes, yeah. So that's like... Crazy for yeah. me. That's I don't even like. Flying. See, that's the thing is, I was just thinking that then is it's weird because 
I don't know any different. I, yeah. I, I couldn't think of what it would be like to, yeah, to that, work I, a job or do something. Yeah, like, that, the thought of not doing those, like to me, well, yeah, well, you just, you know, you go and do that now, yeah, you know. Yeah. To begin with, obviously, is a, is a fantastic thing. You sort of then sort of get get used to it, and that's sort of a, it's a like lovely everything. thing. But it's all relative. It's all relative, isn't it? Yeah. Your your boundaries change. Yes. Like yeah. I remember, you know, times when you've had tough times, you suddenly get through them, and those tough times are sort of around the corner again. You go, ah, it's all right. Well, mm. I've done it once, so we'll do it again. Um, and yeah, being able to just just overcome it. But yeah, it's it's, it's, it's weird because I couldn't think of yeah, because you know, like not you, doing you both, those things. You both like fly. You are both into motorbikes so it seems like even your lifestyle outside of work tends to sway to risk and I, sp- I suppose you could say that so like it's, you, you it's kind of that, yeah. it's not a surprise that you've both set up businesses and taken a jump like you were saying off air that you went from like being a contractor to actually just doing it on your own like it seems no surprise that you've not been afraid to go and do that when even your hobbies are just tailored around risk, like See, going and flying planes. For me, is I think, you know, everyone has that fear. Everyone has that butterfly feeling in their stomach, you know. Everyone has it. I have it, you have it. And it's about not letting fear stop you. Mm-hmm. It's about literally taking control and going, no, what... It's, if you're uncomfortable and, you know, you feel like outside your comfort zone, good. That means you're moving up. You know, you're, you're moving your level. Um, the same, you know, it's, it might be pick him up the phone and speaking to someone. You might, that might worry you. You do that once, the next time, that yeah, it's easier. Next, you know, you you've got to get through them, really. You, you know, you might fly at a thousand feet. Oh, gee, that's, that's really scary. I don't know what I'm going to do. Two thousand feet, that's easy. You know, I've done a thousand, thousand feet. feet. Yeah, yeah. Bad, yeah. Just, <laughs> your, your boundary moves, your level moves. I, I remember having jobs like, I remember when my, my biggest job I was taking on, my biggest contract was worth about 17 grand. <laughs> And I'm thinking, I don't, what if I've priced it wrong? Have I got it wrong? You know, is it going to work out? What am I going to do? Do I know how to do it? You know, and you, you, I remember sleepless nights over it, thinking, you know, am I doing this right? I've got to submit this to a customer, and I've got to stick to that price, and I've got to do it for that. Now I'm like pricing jobs that are seventy five hundred grand. You're like, yeah, it's all right, but Easy. you, you know, now when I get a job come in, it's two grand. It's like, yeah, right, it's this, this, and this, and it's like. Back then, that was a big job, and that was worrying, and you had, you know, <laughs> but if you get through it. Now, when I'm doing 100 grand quotes, I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> you the same feeling. It's the same thing, but you're, you're just moving a little bit. Yeah. You're moving on. Yeah, absolutely. So what's the biggest downside of being your own boss? How long have you got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. That's it, yeah. It's a lonely place at it the top, is isn't it? <laughs> when you've got a question, who do you ask? I yeah. think that's, that's a big one, you know. I think first starting out, I, I, you know, you come to realise that very quickly. In exactly in that position, quoting a job, I'm, you know, my guys are looking to me on how to do it, what we're buying and stuff like that, and the costs, and I've got to pay their wages. But if I've mispriced it or something like that, who do I ask whether or not yeah. I'm doing the right thing? Or you know, you, you don't always know, and you've got it, the buck stops with you. You've got to, you've got to decide. The beauty is with me and Owen is, and really how how I see is, is that the. the from early on, we always wanted to go into property. We mm-hmm. wanted to go into renovate houses, and that's what we wanted to do. And really, the rental started because it would give us a passive income to yeah. pay the mortgage. Owen would then know the trade. He would build up a team that could do the work. That's really what started with it. But the beauty with me and Owen is, you know, if we have a problem, is we can sort of, like, use each other as a sounding board. Mm. You know, is, it's e- sometimes it's easier to look from an outside point of view than when it's... All in, you know, all on you. So you can, I could go to it, right, I've got this, this and this. What, what, what's your thoughts? Is you just use it as a sounding board. Sometimes you don't even need to, them to speak. Yeah. While you're speaking, you're already figuring out your Figuring head. out yourself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and that's where me and I work really well and we do work well is, is because we have that, yeah. you know. And also our long-term like, vision, our goals uh, are p- very similar or if not the same, you know, we, we want to get to the same sort of way in life. And it's, I do find that, uh, you know, we might be on different paths at the moment, mm. but the destination is, is going to be the same. It's just we've got to go down these different paths, paths to get there. So uh, what, is, what is the destination then? Where, where does it, because I, I think with being entrepreneurs and business owners for a lot of people, I know both like my parents were business owners, as I was growing up, still are. And 
I've always sort of thought like they'll never stop doing it. it there's no, there seems to be no end date for a lot of people that run their own businesses because once you're tapped into it, it's very hard to get yourself out, isn't it? We yeah. were having this conversation because we I we 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 were out with with Matt and yeah. obviously he's he's done rather well for himself um, and yeah multi millionaire. But I said to him, when is enough? When yeah. do you go? Do you know what? Age I'm happy because same thing. Like I was saying, you know, you start off with one quote and it keep and the the value of your sales and stuff it just keep increasing. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, same thing goes for every other business owner. You start off and they just the numbers. Same, same problem, bigger numbers on it, really. It, it, it's the same thing. And I go, when do you go, do you know what? I'm a, I've made a million, I'm now a millionaire, now I'm worth 10 million, now I'm worth 20. When do you go, do you know what? I'm happy with what I've got. Yeah. And to be honest, I've not really found anyone that's done that. I think, like yeah. you say, you're stuck in that sort of cycle, I think. It's, you get drawn in, don't you? Yeah. See, that's the thing is, yeah, we were having this Everyone says they want to be a millionaire, but once they get to a million, it's, you know, the, the, the first million's the artist, isn't it? That's what yes. they all say. It's <laughs> the thing, it goes back to being relative again, because I remember when I first started the rentals, and I was like, I set my eyes, and I was like, right, I, you know, I set my target, I was on a thousand pound a month. That was ten machines back then, I want a thousand pound a month. That would just really change, I'll transform it. Got to that thousand pound, it's like, oh yeah. Right, okay. And now it's like, you just keep moving. It's like, and then you get to the next level and it's like, that's not enough. I need to go more. <laughs> and it, for me, is I want to get to my sort I want to get to 30 years old and I want to have the choice where if I, I could stop work, I could retire then and, you know, I could. I never will. Yeah. But <laughs> it's I nice to know you could, isn't I it? I want to be at the point where I choose to do it, not I'm having to do it. Mm. I want to have that choice and but I don't think it will ever be enough because you're always wanting to keep moving forward. There's always that next, sec- that next best thing, you know. And um, It's funny you should say that about retirement because I, I think it's a bit of a... I say this about farmers, isn't it? Because farmers, they, they all live till they're nearly 100, didn't they? They all get, <laughs> yep. They're like 60 jumping in and out of tractors. And I feel like it's the same with business. As soon as you stop, won't be long, you're going to end up in the grave, yes. really, because yeah, slow down. that's keeping you busy. I mean, one of the companies I worked for when I was um, an electrician... Um, Brian, 70 years of age, still getting speeding tickets all the time. He had to go into court and uh, do it because he's tearing about running his business at 70 years of age. Still 12 hours a day in, in, in the office. And I'm like, if he stops now for retirement, yeah. that, that's it. That's yeah, the end of yeah. it, really. You know, your body will naturally go, right, that's what it. I'm shutting it? down. That's it. What is there to do? Is your brain has What else no are you going to do? Yeah, he's, he's got... You know, yeah. So... No, so I, I don't, I don't think there's a stop to it, really, no. no. <laughs> and you're always then looking at another avenue. Yeah. You know, you might, you know, coffee might not be the way forward for me in 20 years. It, you know, I think retirement might even look different. Retirement might be just dropping the number of hours and doing it in a different country yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. you'd still probably have a hand yeah. to it, really. Yeah, it, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's just having that choice. And also, for me, it's, it's you know, I want to... Um, helicopters and um you know have that sort of lifestyle and it's it is it's but that means you just got to keep doing it yeah because uh you know you keep needing to go to the next level to get there yeah. um so that's what yeah i don't think it will ever be enough in a way but for for me i do want to get to 30 years old and be right i could if i wanted to I'm not going to but i've got the choice where i can keep going i guess like what you what you said earlier about finding something that you love and it's not work then I guess like I guess that's what a, a an ideal retirement is isn't it it's like exactly, you said yeah. like you say Tristan having enough money that it's your choice to go to work yeah but then you're going to it like with with uh, your renovations you might do two big renovations a year that you only go you know one day a week to yeah it's plodding it along doing it yeah, is you still is working you but yeah, it's like yeah. if you know if you didn't make any money off that renovation You've still enjoyed doing it, and it's not that much of yeah. a problem. Not relying on the income. Yeah. Not. Yeah. I think that's another thing as well. It's another thing that you, you, you know, another place we want to be is whereby you're not actually relying on it. You're not relying on income. It's not like you need to earn so much money to pay for the rent on your house or something like that. It's to not be reliant and just know that no matter what, you're, you're sort of set. That's it. You know, you, you don't need any anyone else, any yeah. other input. You're. I think that's another thing as well. Entrepreneurs tend to 
be quite controlling. They want to. They want everything to be in their control. They, they don't want to have any. Their destiny. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't want to have anything left. You know, you don't want to leave anything to anyone. You've got to be in control of everything, every little thing, yeah. um, to be able to make it work. No, that's very true. I think you've hit the hit the nail on the head with that. Like you know, retirement might look a little bit different. Because um, for me, I know for me, I, I I'm similar. I want to work work as hard as I can to for work to be a choice. Yeah, and then. I'd happily go and do something that I get paid shit money for, but absolutely love it. But you it. enjoy? Every, when I go to the rugby up at Leicester every week, I always say to my girlfriend, I could be that guy kicking the ball back to him. Yeah, I'd do yeah, that for that'd the rest be of my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could pay me 10 grand a year to do it, but I'd enjoy yeah. it so much. It wouldn't yeah. actually matter about the money. And I guess the goal is to get yourself to a point where you can do that. And you don't have to worry about the money. You're just doing something you really enjoy. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think people have got it wrong. And I don't know, I mean, you know, if everyone was an entrepreneur, then, you know, it'd obviously be easy. And, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, it's always going to be down to a select few. I think that's always going to be the fact. I think you can't, it's not, n- not every, if everyone in the world was running their own business, I mean, it wouldn't work, would it? It's, no, it's, yeah, never, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's never going to happen. So it's your choice to be one of them select few. You've got to make that decision because there's, there's another place for, or someone else is going to take it, really, yeah, isn't they? So, totally. But it's, it's an interesting one, um, you know, but I think they've got, the, the natural concept on life at the moment is a bit wrong. And if you're an entrepreneur, you'll see it different. Most people want to go out, enjoy their younger years, go out party and have fun. That's, what, that's how they see it. Then yeah. they get themselves settled, get a job, work really, really, really hard, you know, work, get themselves a house maybe. And then they'll end up retiring at 60 by 65, which by the time we see it's going to turn into 70, yeah, isn't it? So, you know, yeah. if they're lucky, they'll see their retirement and maybe get five or 10 years out of that. Yeah. Why not? Do it backwards. Work really, really hard. Yep. Get it all done out of the way by the time you're 30. Retire with a nice sum of money in the bank account and enjoy 30, 35 then years. Your years. Then you know, just live your life and live it to the... And that's the thing is, people always say is, you know, we, we do work stupid hours. Um, and But people always say, oh, no, you've got to be careful. Don't, uh, you know, don't do yourself in. You know, you're going to work too much and burn yourself out. It's, but I would rather work really, really hard now Work uh, right now. We're young. We can work as long as we possibly can. You know, we can, we can do it. Our bodies can take it. Yeah. We may as well do it now, and then live the best possible life ever. Yeah, and that's no, how I right. look at it. It's just hard finding a balance, isn't it? Because I often have, for, you know, through my early twenties, late teens, have like had this conflict of: Do you work extremely hard, as hard as you can, and then enjoy it later? But you know, you see that later as well. Exactly, and, and <laughs> like I'm going to Australia in the summer, and a lot of people, like you know, family and friends, some people have said to me like, "Why don't you just do that later?" But then for me, I'm kind of like, "Well, that's something I really want to do, and later isn't a, it's not a guarantee." Yeah. And yeah, yeah, you, you, know, keep, you, you could keep putting it off if exactly. you gave a reason for each time you didn't. You know, exactly. that could go on for yeah. years. And and I've got family members that are you know have injuries and illnesses that mean they can't do stuff that they always said oh you know I'll go, day, I'll go skiing yeah. I'll go skiing when I retire or I'll stop work next year and go skiing and then that next year you know something happened and they can't go skiing and I just think it's really difficult for young people to get that balance of how much do I enjoy now and how much do I work hard to enjoy later which you know I guess and and Joe Joe that, that produced this podcast he's similar to you guys he always says I'm risking now for a better later rather than enjoying now i'm banking that i'm gonna be healthy enough to enjoy this yeah which you know it's a risk that you'll be prepared to take haven't you yeah because that right now i enjoy every second yeah I yeah, every exactly, second, yeah. So really is i don't even consider it yeah. it is just just get on do it yeah yeah and that's the thing is i th- uh, i you know i've watched a lot on youtube and learned a lot and um, I, I do believe in three things, and you've got to have a vision. You know, you've got to, for me, it's a video in my head that is what I want to. Be, you know, it might be a house, it might be cars, it might be a certain lifestyle, it might be on a boat or whatever it is. Mm. You have that vision of what you want. You then got to have your goals. You've got to know what steps you've got to take to get there. You know, you've got to have that little ladder, and what you tick off and you, you go through to get there. And then the the last thing is you've got to take action. You've got to just get up and do it. Um, and without one of them three things. You're not really get, gonna get somewhere because if you 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 might take action, you might have goals, but what are your goals leading to? Yeah. So 
you've got, um, so without, in my opinion, you've got to have one of them three things. Uh, sorry, you've got to have all three is to, to really become successful and do well and get what you want out of life. Yeah. How do you guys keep that level of motivation? Because <laughs> I even find, <laughs> sometimes like, I even find myself, it's stuff that I enjoy doing and I can't get motivated to do it. And I'm sure loads of people are like that. And loads of people, you know, our age are like that, that even stuff that's so enjoyable that they like doing, they're even then like, oh, I can't really be asked. How do you stay motivated to get up and work these ridiculous hours? I, th- I think if you lose motivation, it's hard to get it back. You've got to keep on top of it. If you're always hitting... You work from working from a list is a prime example. I mean, I've been in, you know, I've been times when it's like, oh, I've got this, I've got that, so, you know, you really don't want to do it. We'll write a list and you go, right, well, that's an easy one. Get that one done out of the way. Yeah. Then you've done that. Then you look down, you're like, I'm halfway through. Well, I can get three quarters of this done now. And you can just eat, you know, take the easy bits and work, you know, and, think, and go it through it. Is a mo- it's a is a, it. That motivates you to do the next one. So you don't see. start with the hardest job. Well, that, well that's it. I say this to, to everyone with pro- problem solving. Big problems can easily be reduced down by just breaking it into smaller problems, isn't it? Yeah. So if you break, if you write, if you've got a big problem, write it into right. If I do that, that's going to make it smaller and make it smaller. But if you've got rid of two of them and you've got four problems on a big problem, you're halfway there, aren't you? So it just makes it a lot easier to to do. No, absolutely. So I've kind of got the gist of what you two think about school and the like. You know the <laughs> uh, the the classic curriculum, I guess. Um, what do you think school does for like entrepreneurial spirit? Because personally, I, I actually really enjoyed school, and um, but for me, the best bit of school was the like socialising side, and I had opportunities in school to to be entrepreneurial, selling chocolate and selling sweets and stuff like that. But the school curriculum for me doesn't do anything like that. You have to actually go out and do it yourself. What, yeah. what do you two think about that? Well. Um, I think for me the best part of school is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, I think um, it's like Owen, uh, you started uh, selling sweets in school, didn't you? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's another great sign. If if you're yeah, doing yeah, that yeah. from a young age, yeah, then yeah, it's a great yeah. sign of your 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 future prospects. Really, yeah. I think. Um, that's the thing is, in my eyes, Owen's the entrepreneur. I'm not, and he really is. And even from a young age, he was Del Boy. <laughs> yeah, he had a little flat cap, he used to walk around, he used to, you know, he had his little sweet selling business going, he would then, uh, he would then employ his friends, drop them off their bags so they can go deliver the sweets, and he had, uh, you know, and he, he had that, that, um, that vision and that, um, that spirit, he really did, Yeah. and, um, but the schools didn't like that, and no. the thing is, is, is they kept putting stops to it, then they kept, you know, trying to catch you out, get your, so how do I get my, how do I get the sweets in? You know, yeah. uh, what, what fence do I throw them over? Um, or, but they don't like that. But also, for, for, yeah, entrepreneur, I don't, for entrepreneurs, it's, I don't think school is that helpful in that sense uh, because they've got their own ways to teach you. Yeah. But also, I'm not saying school isn't good, obviously. Because yeah. if you don't go to school, where are you going to read and write? Yeah. Um, you know, so... It's it's that balance. It, it it would be helpful if they were a bit more encouraging. I, I don't know. I, these. I think it's a bit of a tricky one. School is a system bred to create more employees, really. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. And, and control. And yeah, it's it, you, you're being, you know, it's a system put in place in order to get you ready for your future jobs. Yeah. The problem is entrepreneurs tend not to want the future yeah. job <laughs> so it's quite hard you're forcing someone into a system for something that they're not actually going to be mm. you know committing to um and i think because generally teachers as well they're doing their job and they are sort of you know they, they they believe that that's the way that the world works is that you get your job and you yeah. work that so they're stuck in that same system as well and i'm not saying that there's a problem with that that's what they've chosen to do but when you're trying to break the mold you've got everyone around you trying to stop you breaking the mold because yeah. they they see it as maybe troublesome or you know um causing them a bit more work or effort um but you're just trying to break the mold because that's not where you see yourself you're not going to be in that position so why does it really apply to you as well i think yeah. and also i think that they put too much in my opinion too much pressure on the fact of you know i didn't do well at school 
I passed one or two things. I failed business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, um, yeah, because I failed. Um, I failed maths, English, everything. Pretty. I passed uh, two things. One, I was one out of three to pass, and the teacher said I was going to fail, so I was quite happy with that. And the second thing, I only stayed on to do it because it seemed easy and it just gave me another tick <laughs> because I failed everything else. Um, but I think they put too much pressure, basically. Oh, if you don't pass all this stuff, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. You need to have this to do whatever it is. Um, and I, I, that, I think, can cause a bit of a problem because I, I see it... What is it? Um, what's the, the primary school, the... the uh, SATs, is it? Yeah, the SATs, amount of pressure yeah. they put on SATs. Yeah. It's like, you're going to another school. <laughs> yeah. You've got another like, six years of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it matters that much. Yeah. So I think the amount of pressure they put also then makes you worry, oh, am I not good enough? But then the, the, the other uh, question that I'd, I'd throw yeah. into that would be, um, if school wasn't the way it was, would it have bred you to be the person you are now? Because I, no. really, like, I hated it when I was there. Then you leave it and go, do you know what? It wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? The problems I now have, send me back. It was easier then. Yeah. But if I hadn't have gone through the things that I'd had to go through then, um, would I have then just followed suit? And, you know, if, if they yeah. had, you know, I think that's another thing as well, like, you know, teachers were horrible back then, do you know what I mean? And they never, but now you look back and you go, well, do you know what? If they hadn't have been so hard on me, do you know, had it, would it have pushed me in the direction I've, because I knew that that wasn't how I wanted to be. Yeah. So sometimes knowing your enemy and knowing that's not what you wanted is also a good thing to be able to allow you to break that mould. That's my worry with, with school. And you guys all will probably agree because of your upbringing, similar to mine with parents that own businesses. You're going to school and, and if you don't want to be a business owner and, and an entrepreneur, then great. Um, but if you do, you know, you're being taught every day by people, no fault of their own, but they're on the whole never owned a business themselves. You're talking yeah, to like a career advisor that has probably never been a business owner. They've got and the then, easiest job in the world, didn't they? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, all, and I remember through, you know, through sick form, they'd have people come in every week to do talks. Not one of them was an entrepreneur or like a, you know, a business yes, owner. It was always, yeah, yeah. you know, this top four accountancy firm, this massive construction company they're all employees that had come in great people really successful people but if you're that one person in a group which I was that thinking oh you know I'm really not sure about going to work for someone else it's you don't, just continuing that system yeah, again if, isn't it if you yeah. if you don't have a parent like like you guys yeah. did and like I do that owns a business where are you seeing it and it, where are you going to see someone that makes you think yeah I want to do that and that's yeah. where I worry for the kids that don't have parents that are business owners. Where are they actually seeing seeing this stuff actually happening? So I think YouTube and like the internet that helps massively. Is because people can just sit, they can watch it. There's so yeah. many people talking, is you know, and um, they can see other like-minded people. Mm. Is because one thing for me is um, I'm fortunate enough that a lot of my friends have always been older. Always like uh, people we hang around now is they're in their fifties, sixties, um, you know. 40s they all own their businesses um or they're successful in their own right somehow yeah. so w we are fortunate enough where i mean that's because there's not many young people that have, i think that's the problem <laughs> that is true. there wasn't many people yeah. building, building en suites at yeah, uh, yeah exactly anyway. so yeah it was, so, uh, yeah we had the you know um older friends that really inspired us as yeah. well to to try and go our own way and also learning from other people's mistakes yes Yes. You know, yeah, it's massive, isn't sometimes it? Sometimes, like, I used to be a, a type of, oh, I want to learn it myself. If you know I mean? don't, don't walk across that, you might fall in that. Yeah, do you know I'll give it a try and I'll find out for myself. <laughs> and I, I, but then you do learn. Do you know what? I don't need to, I, I can use other people's, I don't need to make all the mistakes, you know. Yeah. Um, you might as well learn from someone else as well. Whereas sometimes when people are giving you advice, you're like, no, 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 I know best. And I was you, like that. You know what I mean? You, you want to do it yourself. Yeah. And if it fails, well, it was on you. You learned it, didn't you? And I was you the exact same. If someone Someone said, "Oh, don't do that. It doesn't work." I just think, "Oh, you probably did it wrong." I'm yeah. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You soon learn that you know some people are just trying to give you advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Sometimes it. take it. <laughs> so you've um you've mentioned a few times about your dad, and um we spoke a bit off air about you know your dad ran a business. You two were really involved as kids, going in and helping out. So, what sort of impact do you think your dad's had on how your careers have ended up? Do you think? That is the sole reason why you've gone down the path you I'd have. I'd say it's a great contribution um, to it, but the I think the, the the what's impacted it most is starting so early. Mm. I, I do think 
Owen especially, um, he would have started before me, but I do think at some point in my life, I would have been probably in my 30s before even considering to go down another route. Um, I think it comes back to hard work as well, really, it doesn't does. it? Um, I mean, if you don't have... You know, before even running a business is concerned, even if we didn't go into doing business, just work ethic. I think we'd be successful in whatever we'd done because it was the yeah. fundamental you know, foundation of ethic, yeah. go and put some effort into something. You know? I think... So even if you didn't run a business, you'd be very successful in, in what we'd, we would have done, whatever it may be. Um, so just having that get up and go to do something is probably less than one, isn't it? Yes. Do you know what I mean? Get that one out of the way. Exactly. And then you can start to follow and see where, you know, where you'd say, was it an impact, was it not, going into business. Yes, he definitely sort of pushed us to say, do you know what, doing it. But also, even without his suggestion of running your own business, you see... Growing up, I'm sure you did, and you're like, you know, you speak to your friends, oh, my dad's got to work tonight and stuff like that. Well, you know, you, you pick, oh, no, all right, I can get off, at, you know, or yeah. get a bit off a bit early. And being able to yeah. see how their life, like what I was, we were saying earlier about, oh, I want to go to a flying lesson in the morning, or I, I want to go out with my friends then and be able to go and meet and, you know, go have a game of golf or whatever it may be, go, you know, to be able to have some time out. But if it fits in your day and you yeah. can make it work with your business, it's your lifestyle. Absolutely. You have a lifestyle business. Um, so I think that sold it to me more than just being told, oh, you know, you want to run your own business, you know. <laughs> it's, I think being able to see how it changes your life is also, you know, yeah. that lifestyle, I think, was more of a uh, yes. sort of sale so, of it. So did your dad kind of like, when you were kids, just let you, you know, like tinker with motorbikes? You mentioned off, yeah. I wanted to definitely get it in the recording about yeah. you building an ensuite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, I mean... <laughs> That to me is just absolutely crazy. For me if I asked my mum if I could build an ensuite, she'd <laughs> laugh at me. For, for me in construction, like I said, my, my, I was saying to you earlier, my dad, um, he used to renovate houses. I used to love Bob the Builder. There was an old TV show called, do you know, you've probably like, maybe a few viewers might know, Tommy Walsh's from Ground Force and stuff like that. Um, but I used to watch those types of shows on, on, on TV and I used to love seeing what people had built with their hands. Yeah. Um, and I used to just, ta- oh, it was like a sponge, I'd just take in the knowledge and remember it. Um, and yeah, so I ended up building an ensuite in my uh, in my bedroom. About I think it took me a little while. I'm not going to lie, but um, yeah, done that when I was uh, about about 14, 15. Um, I remember I remember a few times bunking off school to get me materials deliveries because <laughs> they wanted to deliver during the day. I was like, oh no, quickly jump jump the fence and get on a bus to get home ready for me, me so building what, materials. What, your, what did your dad say when you said? Dad, I want to. Uh, he was very supportive I want to in fund it. Fund my own. Yeah, he was very supportive in, in in the whole thing. Really, I mean, he used to get me to do. We was discussing, you know, on working hard. He'd get me digging holes in the garden, and then yeah. I'd dig in one hole. Right, dig another one there, and fill in the one you've just dug. And like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just for some change and yeah. stuff, just so that you are working for your money. While it's hammering down with rain. Yeah, hammering storm. down in rain, just because you want. He's looking out the window, <laughs> the rain on the window. Uh, another hole. Yeah, another hole over there, and then you know stuff like that. It was mainly you know, just to put some effort in and, and stuff like that. And he was very supportive of it um, and, and really wanted me to, to do it. And it's, again, because it was something I was quite interested in, um, I would, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. And we, you know, we'd just done it. It took me about a year, year and a half, something like that. Um, and it was my first introduction to doing something for myself in that yeah. sort of thing. Whereas whenever I'd done stuff, it'd be for him. He'd always be having me putting shelves up, building this, building whatever. And when he, was, when he used to renovate houses, which was like the early 2000s, um, up to about 2008, um, I'd always be on site every weekend after school. I'd always be there with him. I think I drove my first digger at like the age of five, didn't I? I nearly knocked <laughs> down a garage. <laughs> but... Um, Always there, loved it. I could not, you know, could not get enough of construction. I always, I, and it was sort of one of those things when you look back, you go, well, we always knew that was what was going to happen, you know. Um, although when I left school, it wasn't something that I went, do you know what, that's what I definitely, I didn't know how I was going to do it because, again, we've always been interested in property. I didn't know if it was going to be, I didn't know if I'd earn my money and then go into doing property or I didn't realise I'd be just starting with property, you know. It was, it was one of those. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it is a bit of an interesting one. Cool. So um, just to sort of, of wrap this all up, linking to the first question I asked you, if there was someone listening to this that was about to leave school, maybe maybe even leaving university, and they know that, or they've worked out recently that they want to run their own business, they don't want to work for someone else, and they've got an idea, what would be the advice you two would give them? You know, let's say you've got a job. For instance. Let's say you've got whatever job it is, you've got a nice little income coming in, is start doing it in spare time. Don't sacrifice everything, because yeah. it takes the enjoyment out of, doing what you want to do. 
Because if you're then solely relying on, you know, I don't know what it could be, but let's say, you know, trying to get the next deal is then going to put so much pressure on because, you know, you've got no money, you can't pay for, you know, whatever it is, your bike licence it would be then, wouldn't it? Um, or, you know, I would... If you've got, an, let's, like I say, let's say you've got a job or whatever it is you're doing, or let's say you know what you want to do, get a job and learn it. Then start doing your own thing. Because, really, you're being paid to learn. Yeah. You know, Def- definitely learn it. Like, if you can, I think, yeah, if deciding on what to do, especially leaving school, it was quite hard for me, but the, one of the things which is why I went into construction was, if you, you're not going to get paid for anything. You can't get paid for the job that you're going to have. You have to work it, and you've got to work long days every single day, and you have to work that job. But you're not going to get paid. You don't need to worry about money, but you're not going to get paid for it. What would that be? And then whatever that is, go after that, because getting paid is now a bonus. If you're now earning money from that, that's a bonus. And like Tristan says, go into it. If it's something that you don't know and you have not a clue about it, but you know that's what you want to do, go and get a job. Learn it. Have someone else pay you. Learn as yes. much of that as you can. Be like, be a sponge. Take yeah. all the knowledge out of them. Learn from their mistakes. Know where they're going wrong, and then take it from there and go right. Take the step. Take that risk, and then go and do it for yourself. Yeah. And also, you might find, uh, don't be afraid for things to change. Like I said, I wanted to start my first proper little business was um, it was uh, buying motorcycles, stripping them, and selling them for parts. That was my first proper business. Um, then I bought a Porsche and did the same thing. Um, and it just grew from there, doing a bike. That was a bit cars. selfish because you, you, you wanted a few of the parts of it. I started buying the bike, stripping the of parts, but then that, that changed. I then started mm. doing the coffee machines. Don't be afraid for things to change. And, um, you know, because you might, let's say, you might leave school. And the thing is, when in school, they always go, oh, what do you want to do when you leave school? I don't think anyone age. really knows. Know. Know. Apart from farmers, they always go out and go yeah, work on the farm, aren't they? <laughs> Which again is another, is another thing. You know, that you can't can't knock them. They're all they're all very good businessmen oh, and, and very and, hard and, workers. And, yeah, and yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, it all stems back to oh, we'd yeah. love to get a farm one day because yeah, it, yeah, that is again a lifestyle choice, and you, it's, it probably has a lot of the same traits in it. Yes. Um, it, you're just bound to your land, aren't you? I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, you need a lot for your helicopters. And <laughs> yeah, like yeah and exactly. Yeah. Nice, uh, runway Get a runway going, yours. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's don't be afraid for things to change, and you know your your sort of plans evolved. And you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you might go into something, and that's the thing. If you say, right, I'm going to set my own business, making cakes and selling them, and you start doing that, you put all this effort, you buy all the equipment, buy all the stuff, and start doing it, and you go, actually, this isn't for me. But you you might find. Yeah, you might also then find that plans yeah, moving away, along the way. Well, actually, making the little things that hold the cupcakes <laughs> earns you more money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you, you know. end up going, you know, you started off with a plan where you wanted to make cakes, but you've realised there's no money in that. And along yes. the way, you've gone, well, actually, no, if I just make this part or I just supply the ingredients as a kit for someone to make the cake, you know, your plan will change. There's, there's yeah. no set... No, I don't like. Have you ever written a business plan? No. <laughs> no. You know, it, it can change uh, very quickly. Actually, I have. Yes, actually, no. Think about it. Yes, I did. And yeah, it's not how it was <laughs> <laughs> at all. So yeah, it, the plan will yeah, evolve it naturally. It will change. But like I say, is if you do have an idea, I would just go go get a job and actually make sure this is something you want to do. Mm. And um, and then like I say, start stepping away and doing it yourself. Yeah. No, I really like that. Well, thank you both for coming on. I think you're both brilliant. I think yeah. Wise beyond your years, to <laughs> say the least. Um, no, thanks for the invite, really appreciate it. For, you know, for guys in your early 20s, I think there'd be people double your age that could learn stuff from what you guys have said today. So thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you. It's been thank great, you. thank you. Cheers, guys.